years Blood, sweat, and tears But I'm still here Nothing can stop me Run it up, run it up, run it up, run it up, run it up Nothing can stop me Welcome back to The Grow Show We have a special edition today We have an individual from our team I want to introduce him, Khalil, who's sitting in the room shadowing us today he runs his own podcast on the side was interested in our podcast welcome khalil khalil welcome we it's good to have a professional in the room yeah it really is because we sure as hell have no idea what we're doing amen to that jeff how we doing today uh we're doing great midsummer you know i always my mood gets better the closer school gets for kids so um we're over the hump you're not sad about summer ending no parents are sad about summer ending at this point. Parents no. are thrilled. They're craving the routine. They're excited about the new life they will lead once school begins anew. You don't want to spend more time with your kids? No. No. Uh-uh. Not in this state. <laughs> <laughs> and by, by this state, I mean... Missouri? No. Well, there too. <laughs> They, they get antsy. They get they get rambunctious. You know, all parents enter the summer with great intentions. We're gonna have an amazing summer full of fun and adventure. And it's like four hours in, they're screaming at me. It's like, no, we're gonna have a shitty summer, just like we did the last nine. <laughs> oh, they're great. They're, they're the great. best. Yeah, I, that's, I the wouldn't best. give them back. I'm just saying. Yeah, it's summer. It wears you down. You wears don't you know. Down if you're a, a parent, you know what I'm talking about. Best intentions. Now we're deep in it, but I see over the hill. School is coming. We're mid July. You're already in, to the end of summer. We're not even close. Oh man, school school gets out so early here. You have no idea. <laughs> Teacher meetings. I mean, it's all the same thing. Finally, yeah, over the hump, Mid-summer. over the hump, and we're here. That's right. And uh, we got some great, great stuff that we need to talk about today. But the mm-hmm. first thing, as always, what's going on in LinkedIn? As usual, patrolling the pastures of LinkedIn, separating LinkedIn, 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 separating truth from lie, fact from fiction. The first truth comes from Greg Shoemaker. Greg says customer email should be acknowledged by end of day or sooner the following morning under extenuating circumstances, especially if you're in a sales role, which everybody is. Show me how bad you want this. I think this is A, a truth, but B, something you need to build into the culture and the process of your organization. Eric? Yeah, we actually recently had... A, a like string of issues of um like people responding to clients the next day mm-hmm. and we just made it very clear as an organization that if uh if a client responds to us in the morning we need to get back to them by lunch if they respond in the afternoon at the latest by end of day things move too fast in this day and age and i want my information now Now, what I do want, I believe in time blocking. I believe in working your day with intent. And I believe in not jumping on every single issue that comes up. But you should be able to get back to somebody within the day every single time. And and, uh, it's the one thing as if you're managing accounts or if you're in sales, you have 100% control over that helps your results. Key word in this particular post is acknowledged. Yep. Acknowledged. Yeah. That doesn't mean... Every client email needs to be responded to with a five paragraph essay. Exactly. But it needs to be, hey, Eric, saw your note at a minimum. Hey, Eric, saw your note. Want to give this a really thoughtful reply. We'll be back to you by X, but didn't want you to think I didn't see it. Exactly. God, it makes me feel good when I, when I have something like that. Yeah. As opposed to. I sent it in the morning and now it's the next morning. Yeah, Yeah. no, I was busy. We're dealing with this with a a vendor right now. Mm -hmm. And we've been kind of waiting on something for a while and we've had to push. And that's just not... No pushing. Yeah, don't make me push. But build it into your company. Build it into your culture. Yep. Boy, oh boy. Truth. A lot of agreement. The next comes from Eric... er, Excuse me, Aaron Turnmeyer. You're Eric. This is Aaron. Aaron Turnmeyer. (laughs) A lot of people applying for jobs, a lot of people receiving resumes in today's day and age. 
never any shortage of folks uh, getting hired or trying to get hired or folks hiring. Let's do some resume tips. After reading hundreds of resumes for the first time in what seems like ages, I thought I'd offer some tips to job seekers after seeing some trends. I'm just going to read a couple. No pictures. Really, fun fact, pictures on resumes became a thing in the mid-1950s and 60s when some companies were trying to bypass racial discrimination laws. What you look like should have no decision on whether you, whether or not you can do the job. No pictures. Second, no bold red, bold pink, or bold neon green. It hurts to read. Yes, it stands out, and it is different, but not in a good way. And the last one I'll read, and Eric, I know you love this one. <laughs> No resume should be eight pages long. Keep it short, sweet, and to the point. Maybe counterintuitive, but it's not impressive. Rather, it causes a sigh before I even read the content. Yeah, I. Here's my thing. I'm not a big fan of resumes in general. Oh, really? And and here's I I know they're a necessary evil, yeah. and you have to have one. It's table stakes. Call the company you're trying to get hired by. Send them a message you on LinkedIn. You still got to give them a resume. They're going to say, send me a I'm, resume. I didn't say. I said you have a resume. They're going to say, I send me care. a resume. Yes, they will. But if you have a conversation with them, now it'll mean something. And it doesn't matter if your resume is pink, green, blue. You have your picture on it. You don't. It doesn't matter. You talk to them. You have a relationship. It's a terrible take. What are you it's, talking about? It's a terrible take. If, okay. If you were, if you're going to hire a sales rep tomorrow. Yes. And you, they see the job posting uh -huh. and you have 10 resumes on your desk. Right. Somebody gets you on the phone, finds your cell phone, Zoom info, texts you, hey, Jeff, I'm interested in the position. I want to call you. Calls you. Yeah. Has a conversation. No doubt. You love them. And yeah. then they send the resume. That's not better than being in your stack? The second part of what, the, what you said is what you said. You got to have a resume. I mean, at some point, that's what I resume. said in my first answer. You got to have a resume. And the resume. Table stakes. Do you know what table stakes are? Table stakes is what you have to bring to the table. I mean. You know, uh, nobody ex explains the obvious to the informed like my friend Eric Watkins. It's unbelievable. Let me explain something. The resume is so... Re it's, it's all you have in so many cases. Yes, I suppose some people get a hold of the hiring manager and do the call. But in most cases, and by the way, I'm hearing this with people in and around my world, they're flipping resumes into what they what appear to be nowhere. That's what it feels like. And maybe it's because their resumes suck. Yeah, you should go above and beyond, but maybe your resume sucks. Yeah. And you know what? No picture, completely agree, and with all the rationale. I don't want pink highlighter. Absolutely no, not. That yeah. tells me nothing about Black you and that white. I like. Absolutely right. And I got to tell you something. I bet you Obama could get his resume on a one page. Yeah. So can you. Yeah. And I 100% agree with that one. And Aaron also says, don't make your resume... Uh, small by reducing the font size to six. I don't want that either. Just tell me what you've done. You haven't done that much. I guarantee it. And if you have, you're not getting a job that you need a resume. <laughs> That's the reality. Like No one has. I haven't. You haven't. You, get yeah, your, you can yeah. get your resume on a one page. Yeah. Black and white. What a take from you. Call. Don't make a resume call. I, mean, I didn't. Sad. Did I say not make a resume? You might as well have. Brian, what did you hear over there? Ryan, Ryan's impartial. Yeah, he's, he's impartial. Not, he's, not yeah, paying, he's, he's not paying attention. He's impartial. I don't know which of one of them. He's paying attention to something more interesting. He's watching yeah. TikTok. Which, by the way, is a recent joiner of TikTok eight days ago. How did I know this I was going to get tell brought you, up? Any, but I don't know where I was. I was against it now. Oh, my gosh. Thank you, TikTok. We haven't seen Jeff in 10 days. <laughs> That's why I want my kids to go back to school. <laughs> so you could watch more TikToks? Watch more TikTok. Really hot take on the future of outbound sales from Cody. The lies. Lies. A hot, bad take. Kind of sounds like sales and marketing are going to get closer together. With a salesperson reaching out only, only to very warmed leads that are picked based on engagement level to marketing. What a wonderful world this will be. The sales reps are going to be able to look at a list of prospects and go, ooh, that one's not hot enough. That one's not hot enough. <gasps> Finally, I can call this prospect that has been warmed. Mm. 
Eric, is that yeah. where we're tell people how great it's going to be once we get to this yeah. Disney World of selling? Yeah, not going to happen. And if you do that as a company, you're missing out on 95% of the market. What that, are you doing? Yeah, that you go build relationships with and you get a proprietary lead instead of competing against five other people. Yeah. Now, by the way, if you work at a company where you can select which leads you're able to work because some of them aren't warm enough for you yet, <laughs> let me know the number. Yeah, let me know the number. Congratulations to you. There's like six They grow on trees. Six companies on earth like that. Yeah. Uh, no. That is not what's going to happen at all. Maybe sales will get closer to marketing. That's going to fluctuate like an accordion sure. like it has since the dawn of time itself. But you're not cherry picking which league. Get, don't do this. Don't fall into this trap. Don't think this is going to happen for you sellers, no. sales managers, sales leaders, CEOs, owners, founders, VPs. Sales. No chance. Yep. Sorry. There's people out There's like this dangerous narrative of people out there that are like, we're just going to hunker down for, you know, really focus on our client base and then drive marketing to get leads in. Yeah. And they're going to be in a worse spot here relatively shortly where they have no idea where their next deal is coming from. Let me let me dispel any myths and rumors. Prospecting is harder, but it surely isn't impossible. Right. And don't give up and try to go to something like this. That's just yeah. not going to work. I mean, good luck if it does. Great. Good on you. I want to invest. Right. Call me. Lie. Lie. What business is that? I have no idea. Okay. Maybe maybe as an in business since that post. We don't do follow up questions in do my section. Okay. We just let me go. Okay. Okay. All right. Well moving on to the fifty for fifty today. This mm. one's near and dear. Near and dear to the heart. It's literally near. Near. And dear. Right. So we talk a lot about vision within our organization. We promote from within. And it's important to us that everybody that comes into the organization is always you know, growth is our key value at this organization. Mm -hmm. You're growing personally, you're growing professionally. And we want to make sure that everybody in the business has a defined career path that they can go into. But you just can't define the career paths, put them on paper and talk to people about them. You have to make them real. Mm -hmm. And today I mentioned at the beginning that we have Khalil in here and Khalil runs a podcast on the side. He does his own podcast. Mm -hmm. So he said, We'd love to check out. I'd love to sit in and see how you guys do it and, um, you know, learn more about my craft and what I'm doing from that perspective. And, and that's just one example of how throughout our organization at different times, we expose the people within our business to different positions where they can do shadow sessions mm -hmm. and actually learn more about the position. And that makes the vision real until I've seen. And I know. It doesn't have to be something that's in your company as well. Maybe Khalil wants to run his own podcast and do that full time in the future. Great. We want to help the skills that you need to learn here and develop to achieve whatever dreams you have in life from there. And I think making the vision real is something that we've done maybe even unknowingly along the way. And as you look back, you see the impact of it. It's so easy. Khalil, how long have you worked here? Khalil's worked here seven months. Okay, so it's not like Khalil's worked here five years. He's worked his way into it. So important. Khalil came up to you, Eric, right? Like, yep. And wanted to do this too. That's the other thing. You got to, not only do you have to talk about it, not only do you have to uh, act on your words, but also you got to have amazing people who believe it and who will proactively go, hey, this is where I want to be. Can you help me here or elsewhere make this a reality and sit on a podcast or whatever it is it's uh it's this virtuous cycle that we've been fortunate enough that we've done plenty of things wrong but one thing we've done right is that yep and now you you get exposure to whatever the thing is whether it's sales or podcasting or whatever you also get exposure to the people who are doing it yep it's uh it's a great way to run a business and to ensure that especially if you've got individual contributors uh, and lots of them that stay at a particular level some, for some period of time, like, boom, doesn't have to be that way. We got lots of avenues here for growth. Yeah, one of the hidden benefits as well is when you shadow individuals in different departments, they start to learn more about the company as a whole. Mm -hmm. And what you find is, oh, you know, I wanted to shadow uh, someone in operations and they learn more about how we make our list. And then 
someone has a question on their team about, man, this list isn't good. Well, this is how this is their process and how they make it. And they educate them on that. And it's hard to put a value on what that is. But the more collaborative you can be as a business, the the better you're going to be. And the other thing is, you know, you avoid this, the following exit interview. Are you going to one more me on my own section? You I avoid, went, you went, I went. I didn't you, realize there was a... Go ahead. I didn't realize there go was ahead. a code of conduct. That's okay. Here. Yeah. Just go ahead. But uh, yes and. <laughs> you avoid the exit interview conversation of, yeah, I'm leaving. Why? Well, I didn't, I didn't grow in my position. Well, why not? Well, I didn't really know what I wanted to do. And now I know because I went and found some other job. And that's what I want to do. Well, like you could have probably found whatever that was here if we had just exposed you to more stuff. Sure. One more thing. One other thing. God. You know, the last couple of weeks, you've really, I think, behaved yourself because we had guests and then you're in Kansas City and that was kind of a fun thing for you. Today, different. You bring your whole self to work. That's what I've been told. Definitely. I'm all here. You are all right. No question about that. Well... One of my favorite things to do every single week oh. is not only mining for growth gold, but passing it from myself to myself. <laughs> so, <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Ryan. So, for today, mining for growth gold, we're digging into show rate. And we have talked about this before, but I want to go back over it and I want to reiterate the importance of it. When you are setting an opportunity, for your sales team, or maybe you're doing this for other companies, whatever it may be, on that appointment call, you need to get the calendar invite accepted on that call. You need to actually physically, you don't have to write in all the information. You can even just say, hey, I'm sending you a, a, a skeleton to make sure that it's it's blocked off on your calendar. And you know, there's a couple reasons. A, when we started this, we did it just for show rate to make sure that more appointments show up. Naturally, if someone accepts the calendar invite, you're going to have a way higher likelihood of showing up. The second thing, people today have their email spam filters tighter than a pickle jar. Like there are some companies where you are going to land in spam. It doesn't matter what email you're sending from. And so figuring that out right then and there versus two days later where they realized it's in their junk. Third thing, you get a pulse on how excited they are about this meeting. Mm. It it becomes real when you have to hit accept and know that you are you are showing up to a meeting and you can address any concerns right then and there. It's like, yeah, I'm not by my calendar. Well well Jeff, are you are you excited about this meeting? Like we're really excited to talk to you about these services. And um I just think this is Instead of just, you get so excited, you get the meeting, okay, we're going to meet at this date, do, 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 do. you get done with it, great, I got a meeting, but go that extra step, get the calendar invite accepted. Tighter than a pickle jar. Tighter than a pickle jar. Boy, you oh ever boy. tried to unscrew a pickle jar? Never. Not my thing. You don't eat pickles? That's not the, my role in my family dynamic. I'm not the unscrewer. Katie does the pickle jars? Oh, she's amazing at it. Um, <laughs> let me say this. I view this in a more boring way. And I'm harping on the spam filtration and I'm harping on the pickle jar. You are now hearing more than ever, anybody who's in sales out there, I didn't make it on my calendar. Right. I didn't get that invite. Okay. Well, is that an internal issue for you? Maybe, but maybe it's totally out of your control. Yeah. And maybe you have to be on an approved sender list that's either uh, actually dictated by that customer or you have to have had some back and forth with that customer and then the system will know to accept your invites. This is completely logistical to me. Also, calendar systems are different. Some you have to accept the invite for it to be on your calendar. Some if it's it's in a light gray versus a dark gray, if you accept versus don't accept. Some if you don't accept the invite, someone else can't see it and they can book over it. To me, this is purely logistical. Make yep. sure they accept on the phone because they might be telling you the truth that it didn't make it on their calendar. And then the other thing, so the reverse, when you get somebody back on the phone and let's say they didn't show up for the meeting, what's the easiest thing for them to say of why they didn't show up to the of meeting? Of course. Yeah, hey, never, never made my calendar. Right. Right. And you get rid of that right up front. So boring, simple, not super easy to implement because it's an extra step that yeah. everybody has to go through. 
but important. Very, very important. Very important. Jeff, what do we have for Tales from Sales? Tales from Sales. Man, blasted in our ear. Oh, my gosh. That last coin falling really makes it. There's yeah. a thousand of them. Yeah. The last one really doesn't. Yeah. We're talking about commitment on the prospecting side today, committing to the meeting. We're also going to talk about committing on the sales side, and I'm going to talk about a very specific person. Because we've talked, Eric, endlessly almost, about when you're on a sales call, you must schedule a next step. But for some people, that is not enough. A next meeting is not enough. And I'm going to tell you something, I'm one of these people. Because the people I'm talking about are the get swept up in the moment, get excited people. Mm-hmm. I'm a get swept up in the moment. Oh, you're pitching me a product. I am excited. This is awesome. I'm in. I love it. I get swept up in the moment, especially yeah. by a good presentation. Yeah, for I'm sure. there. And I am the most dangerous prospect to have in your funnel. <laughs> I'm dangerous. This guy, yeah, because they're getting off. This guy's going to buy. He's going to buy. I'm telling him I'm so excited. And then I am gone. Because I, if I'm getting that excited about your thing, I'm getting that excited probably about a competitor's thing. I'm getting that excited about my next meeting. <laughs> and then you know who that person isn't? Logistics person. Like, that's not me. I'm not a logistics person. Get swept up in the excitement and the wave person typically isn't logistics person. So what I'm going to probably do is I'm going to get really excited about whatever product or service you're pitching me. And then I'm going to go talk to someone who is a logistics person. And what are they going to say to me, Eric? 12 things of why it's a bad idea. Slow down, Jeff. Slow down. We ain't buying it this month. We're not buying it this year. Yep. So these are tough people to handle, and you got to know them, and you got to manage it right. And scheduling a next meeting isn't enough because I'll blow off that next meeting. As soon as I get to the logistics person and they say no, then I got to blow it off. And I haven't given you the concerns yet. Yeah. So we got to go a step further. We got to be uncomfortable in the next step for this person. And typically, depends on your sales cycle. It could be earlier in the sales cycle if you're selling something a little lower dollar with a quick sales cycle. It could be later in the sales cycle if you're selling something at an enterprise level. But still, it always works. I'm going to give you a couple of tips and ideas. Um, I'm going to give you five. Eric, latch on to whichever one you like. Yep. All of these I've used. One, and this is enterprise setting, non-binding LOI. I've used a non-binding letter of intent, which means absolutely nothing legally. <laughs> Literally nothing, but it's getting someone to sign something. Next, simpler, uh, schedule your first customer-facing interaction. Okay, and I have two ideas here. Onboarding is easily easy. If you do onboarding, on the call, great, Jeff. I'm so excited. You're excited. What time's good to schedule the onboarding? Whoa, boy. Wait it's real. a Becoming second. Becoming real. Now I got to backtrack a little bit. Yeah. Uh, alternatively, it's look, we've... We've really thought about this. We have a perfect account manager for you. We'd love to introduce you so you can kind of get to know the team that you're going to be working with. When's a good time to meet that person? That's another easy substitute. Second, awesome. We're so excited. Or I guess this is third, I suppose. We're really excited to uh, have you on board as a customer. We'd love to fly you out. When would be a good time? We'd love for you to come to our offices mm -hmm. and tour. We'd, and we're going to set something up so you're going to be there. Um, and then the last one. If you have a podcast or if you have a session where customers or prospects talk to your team, fill them in on the market, or you want them to talk to the sales team, invite them to that event. Invite them. And Ryan, we're so excited to have you on board. We can't wait. Um, you know, would, would love to have you. We do a little series where our salespeople hear from the market, where our leadership team hears from the market. Would you mind participating in something like that and just sharing some thoughts on the process, given that you're sort of becoming a customer now don't get swept up with the get swept up in the moment people next step meetings not enough i'm gonna get logistics i'm gonna get logistic yeah and therefore you're gonna lose a deal so i i love this i think the to me i'm i sum this up as you're making it real you're making it real that they are going to be buying the product yep and when it goes from oh my gosh this sounds amazing to I have to go talk to the logistics person. That's the next step in making it real. Right. And so what then probably comes out is, well, I probably shouldn't fly out yet because I still have to talk to Katie and right. I know she's going to have concerns. And now, perfect. That's what we want. Good. It's on the call. And most of the time, if you just go, yeah, walk me through the decision-making process. Go, look, I'm going to go talk to Katie. It's going to be no big deal. And that, yeah. like, that's, that's what I'm going to say. Yeah. And that's not true. 
I'm yeah. just going to say that to move this along because I know what you're going to say. Yeah. I got to talk to Katie. Well, what's Katie going to think? Yeah. Like, I'm going to avoid that. Com- I'm hip to that. I'm going to yeah. avoid that conversation. Yep. And making it real. What's your favorite one? It really depends on size of the deal, whether yeah. or not it's a signer. There's a lot. I I can tell you the non-binding LOI is awkward in a lot of cases, but I got to tell <laughs> you, it works like a charm. Like our conversion, we used to sell really big deals to really big health systems. So it made a little more sense to like commit yeah. some resources. And we'd say, look, well, great. We'll send over a non-binding LOI. It's exactly what it sounds like. It's just a letter of intent. It's non-binding. And then people go, I'm not going to sign that. Yeah. Well, why, why, why not? It's just non-binding. It's, yeah. a non, it's literally, it says it in the thing. It's non-binding. There's no reason not to sign it unless A, you can't sign or B, you don't want to sign. Right. And you find out, well, I don't have the authority to sign anything. Yeah, and that's like the strictest thing you can do, yeah. the non-binding LOI, yeah. or like have them fill out an application. Yeah. Okay, great. You have to fill out the application now. Yep. Yeah, it was interesting. I was listening to a sales, uh, one of our sales pitches the other day, and the guy was like, I love this. It's like I am a thousand percent in. I just have to find the budget. And we didn't figure out what that means and like dig into that. This yeah. is where these calls are won or lost. This yeah. is where prospects go ghost. Yep. Like I love this. This is five easy things you could do. And it's but it's but it's you know, you it's probably you do with anybody. But there's plenty of people where they're really analytical and if they say they're doing it, they're doing it. Like right. you don't need to worry. I mean, yeah. sure you maybe you could, but it could be overkill. This is for get swept up in the moment person. By the way, you're like this too. Yeah. You're a little better than I am. Yeah, slightly. But but that take the example of the pitch I was listening to. Yeah. The guy's like, I'm in thousand percent. I just need to find the budget. Okay, great. Well, if you're in, like, I'd love to fly you out next week. Right. Well, oh. the but well the budget, you know, yeah, it, it's just you get if that comes out. I mean, in sales, the worst thing you get is maybes. Like, we want yeses or nos, and I mean that. I love it. I want to track the win rate when people say I'm a thousand percent in. I bet it's zero. <laughs> <laughs> I bet we close zero percent of deals where people say I'm a thousand percent in. Because yeah. that's the shit I say, and then I'm a mil- <laughs> I'm a thousand percent out ten minutes later. <laughs> that's a very good point. We should look at that. Thank you. By the way, shout out to our win rate when the grow show is mentioned. Oh, we really buried the lead on this. This is so yeah. exciting. Our uh, some gong analytics when grow show gets brought up on one of our sales pitches. We have a 58% win rate. Mm-hmm. Did you know, I actually dug into this deeper, when they mentioned my name plus Gong, 90%. 90% less. Less, yeah. 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 You are. My, my name, name plus is more. Is it? Well, right. uh, yeah. Mm. All right. All right. We're finally here. Mm. We're finally here. The moment that people have been waiting for to do or not to do. Mm. Cue the horns. We still haven't had a better one than the horns. We can do better than that. Yeah. That's all right, though. That's all right for today. This one's interesting. This one's interesting. What about the past ones? They haven't been interesting? Uh, I got to make everyone feel important. By it, saying it's interesting. Exactly. So Smart. everyone, if you could go back and listen to everyone and say, you know what? I really like this one. Or this uh, one's yeah. very interesting. But this one actually <laughs> is very interesting. <laughs> Take my word for it. It's the summer. Even though Jeff wants the summer to end, we are still midsummer. Yes. And what happens in summer? Concerts. Yeah. Outdoor concerts. They're awesome. The venues. It's something to do. It's great. But here's my thing. I've been asked to go to a couple concerts. You got one coming up. Mm-hmm. Should you go to a concert where you do not know the music or the musician? Really timely. So my my guy James, loyal listener, invites us weeks ago to a concert with a guy named Billy Kernington or something. Never, Do you know of this person? Never heard of him. No one's ever heard of this person. I think it might be a surprise party for me. I mean, maybe it's not. <laughs> and I don't know this guy, okay? But I'm going and I'm excited. Because let me tell you this, a concert, even a bad concert, is probably better than a good dinner couple's dinner date you know like that's my take like a bad co- and i don't know how i'm going to conduct myself i've never been to a concert where i didn't know literally who the guy was or any of the songs i don't know if i'm gonna like bop my head or tap my feet or whatever i'll probably just sit but i am excited to do something 
that is a fun activity. That's what I'm looking at this as. It's a fun activity versus going out to dinner, having a couple of drinks, going home, watching Succession on rerun, and going to bed. So that's what I think. Interesting. Well, I'm a very boring person. So watching Succession on rerun sounds fun after dinner and drinks. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, no, I'm not going unless I know the artist. I don't like it. I feel awkward at a concert when I don't know the music or the artist. But like if the music if the music is good but I don't know the artist and I can like listen ahead of time and get a little feel for it, I'm yeah. in. But if I'm like not into the music and I'm just like at the concert, not for me. But like then here's I want to sing along. I want to scr- I want to sing along. I'm I'm the guy at the concert. I'm saying every word. I know that I've seen you. I've seen you awkwardly do that, and I can I can tell you. I can no, it's not. It's not audience. awkward if you're doing it with everybody else. Mm, you've you've somehow <laughs> beat the headwind on that. But here's what I would say: everyone would rather go to a concert where they can scream the lyrics. I get that, but what I think people underestimate is in life we need variety. And a concert of any kind, even one where I don't know who the hell it is, is better than a regular night out. My producer is applauding. Granted, he yeah, is a musician. He's a, musician. a little he's bit of a, I think the music community yeah. and I have now formed an unbreakable I did, bond. I did go to his concert. I had never heard his music before. And how was that? I wish I would have been home. <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> you were having a blast. Hey, he knows I was having a blast. <laughs> I was having a blast. You know what? I will say, uh, you know, maybe you're turning me on. Have this. I convinced you? There's good people watching at concerts, too. There you go. That's the part I underestimated. I, I'm, yeah, I love the people Who watching. is your favorite concert that you've ever personally been to? Luke Combs. The recent Luke Combs concert. No, the one previous to that is actually indoor. Indoor. But I got, you know, I spent a little bit more and sat close, and it was just, it's the first time I've, I've never sat close at a concert, like with a bigger artist, mm-hmm. and uh, it was legit. You know who my first concert ever was? Who's that? You're never going to guess it. I'll give you three guesses. I don't want any guesses. I want you to, I want three guesses. Um, I'm going to They are in guesses. prison gonna... now, I believe. <laughs> that narrows it down. <laughs> I have no idea. R. Kelly. Okay. First concert I ever went to. Is that right? Yeah. Not was this. great. Hey, he, at the time, before, he had jams. Oh, like, yeah. I didn't realize how many songs he had, but now I regret that that's my first concert. It's getting cut. Um, <laughs> my favorite concert. <laughs> my favorite concert uh, was Beyonce. <laughs> What? Absolutely, Beyonce. It was Which, when was it? A long time ago in her heyday? Oh, no, this was like well, it depends on you're not that old. Four years ago, probably. Oh, she's old news at that point. Oh my gosh, you'd never seen somebody perform like that, Beyonce, and then and then Justin Bieber, unmatched. I've been to a Justin Bieber concert. Unmatched Bieber. Yeah, everything is. It's electric. weird that you went to that one by yourself. I don't think so. I think it's weird that you went by yourself. I think like if you were taking your kids or your wife or something, but I, the fact that I saw you there all alone and I was, and was, I was there too all alone. Was, was the face paint too much? The face paint was a little too much. All right. All right. We're done with this. We're done. As always, thank you all. Khalil, thanks for sitting in. Thanks, Khalil. Um, Katie, Ryan, thank you as usual. Until next time, let's grow. Let's grow. The Grow Show is sponsored by Abstract Cloud Solutions, certified Salesforce consulting services.